if 1% of us become coherent, you can shift an entire civilization. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to go in there and fight that system. And I go, you know, that's not really good either, because yeah. if you're fighting the system, then you're contributing energy, whether it's pro or con, to that system. The way to fight the system is not to be part of the system. And that the intelligence community is very much afraid of, because that's something, A, they cannot control, and B, it would transcend their ability to alter the outcome. When we do that, then we'll find there's more of us than the other ones. And then all of us who are on the outside of the system actually become the new system. It's time for us to put our energy into what we are building up. We're building a new civilization. You are here on this broadcast because you're already part of what are called the cultural creatives. You're part of those people that are saying, give me another answer to what's going on. Everybody's mind is like a tuning fork because actually you can read brain activity from outside your head with magnetoencephalograph. If you're reading my brain function from outside, then what am I doing? I must be broadcasting my brain function. Greetings, 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 my lovelies, and I am back with another video. My goal in life is to show the collective consciousness that you are the creator of your own reality and to know that you have the power within you. Love yourself, adore yourself and create from within yourself and you thereby raise the vibration of this entire planet. Everything is, everything is energy you guys okay so right now everything that we are doing especially in the craft and creative community is a caveat to the whole um awakening process that is going on in the earth right now <laughs> so anywho only those who can see will see okay let me put it that way so anyway look at that Take a look at this loaded envelope, that beautiful little paper clip. Oh my god! And um, these papers, and I just started throwing in every kind of paper I had. I wanted some butterflies, so I went into my paper stacks, and yeah. So we have a little pocket right here on the front of this one. Look how cute that is! Look at that beautiful roses and there's a card inside beautiful pansies beautiful just a great uh loaded envelope for mother's day you guys look at that card music um uh, paper on there very high energy paper yeah and all of these papers that I use throughout this whole process can be found in my uh elegant tools digital store closes with a little string closure on the front and then it opens up to a page with some um, paper clips and you can stick papers up under the paper clips so I stuck a few beautiful little flowery cards little uh, journaling cards up under the paper clips and it has beautiful words on it beautiful healing words and numbers and I use one of my um, Martha Stewart punches on this one um, I think that's the um, I think that's the snowflake punch one of my snowflake punches that I used in here so what and look at those cards oh my god take a look at that page with the beautiful writing and you can uh, journal on those pages yeah so um i didn't finish this one yeah this is the one so we're gonna finish this one as we go along i'm gonna show you this last page right here the background look how pretty that is and you can journal on here write notes what have you and then it has a little tag and we're gonna finish the tag and it has a little booklet and we're gonna finish that in this one and i appreciate you so much for watching much love There is a deep relationship between collective consciousness and the physical world. Sociology studies of meditators, where they go into a community, say you have a town of 200,000 people, 
and they would send in 1% of the population equivalent, 2,000 people, to go into deep meditation. And they found that emergency room visits declined, violent crimes declined, uh, robberies, all kinds of negative behaviors declined, even though those people didn't even know they were in the city. Because there is this resonant effect through the force, if you want to look at it that way, through this entangled, interwoven consciousness field. And people who didn't even know these meditators were there became more ordered, more peaceful, more happy, et cetera, and so on. This was actually based on the studies done in quantum physics in which a container of helium was cooled down to absolute zero. When only 1% of the helium became aligned to coherent, the entire container went through a phase transition, instantly shifting into coherence and taking on almost magical properties, a state called superfluidity. So there was this transformation at that 1% point. When a critical mass of people, and whether it's 1% or a fraction of that, depends on the state of consciousness of those who are practicing the meditation or a prayer or coherence. But at that point, you can shift an entire civilization. If we all become coherent, just 1% of us, like a molecule of helium, and we become aligned and coherent and move in the right direction, it will transform the other 99%, even though they don't know that we're doing it. Our thoughts, be they positive thoughts or negative thoughts, are vibrations sent out to the field. The vibrations are the sole source that controls the particle matter. And so our thoughts as vibrations are influencing the field. And this is exactly what quantum physics said. Yes, our thoughts are manifesting our reality. We also know the heart is a very serious generator of electrical vibrations and fields. You can read a heartbeat uh, about anywhere from 12 to 15 feet away from a person. You could take a probe and read the electrical activity of their heart. We now recognize, and especially through an organization called HeartMath, that if we put our consciousness coming through our heart, it amplifies the consciousness a magnitude greater than what it is. Then our consciousness has more power in influencing the character of not just our lives, but those around us. So the point is very simple. Each of us is a tuning fork. And if we can take that vibration and come from the heart, uh, we can change the vibration of the field. And the field is what governs the nature of matter. Uh, we have a very powerful influence. Today we are in a mass extinction, science is recognized. And the significance is it's human behavior that is manifesting this. And what we have to recognize is we have to change our consciousness and our behavior because our collective consciousness is unfortunately not supporting our viability on this world. That we are living out of harmony with the planet and out of harmony with each other. And this disharmony is disrupting the garden, simple as that. We are actually not going to an end, but we're breaking down for a new beginning. And the new beginning is a consciousness, a new image, a new way of behaving, a new way of learning to live in harmony. We're going from a Darwinian view where there's a struggle, a competition for survival, and uh, you know, it's, a, it's a very stressful world, to a new world, a new world of understanding, a new evolution that recognizes evolution isn't based on competition, it's based on cooperation that we're creating a community. It's community that rep is representing evolution. That we're, stop focusing on the part that's coming down. You're seeing the chaos of a breakdown of a civilization that's not sustainable. <laughs> that's why we're in extinction. And while that's coming down, you can either focus on the breakdown or you can start to focus on what's new and what we're building. Because if we redirect our attention in that way, then we will be supporting with our consciousness this building of a new civilization, not based on survival, based on thrival.